Mr. Jiru is submitting on, which touches on very critical facts concerning Professor Kidiki as to his qualifications. And we are all familiar with the qualifications of Professor Kidiki. I, I think the last time Mr. Kamodo was before you, he said he has no client. I have a client, the 10th respondent, the United Democratic Alliance. I ceased to act for the other client because uh, it would have been illegal. But I have a client. So I'm properly on record. And uh, it is important that uh, the record be made straight with regard to Professor Kidiki's qualification and <coughs> including uh, what had been cited in the affidavit that he was not a member of the UDA by the, uh, for three months, which is not a requirement in law. No law requires you to be a member of a political party for three months for you to ascend to the position of the deputy president, which Professor Kidiki has acceded to. And secondly, uh, it will be a merit be issue that is being argued. So are we going to have the opportunity to answer it? Because the law is the opposite of what you say. It was raised by Mr. Giro. I'm just clarifying. And then Mr. The Giro will continue. Raise that issue, that is my submission, my law. He is going into the merits. But then Mr. Giro may just, just let's sort it. My lord, it's me who is on record for Professor Kindiki. I think if Mr. Degwan Giro, my very good friend, I usually call him the black bull, could keep off the black, the the his black, application. The black what? Bull. That's, that's what Degwan Giro means. Uh, if my friend, the black bull, could uh, keep within the remit of a rejoinder and a reply will not be having all these interjections. I, I've been resisting the edge because I always try to avoid appearing cantankerous. Uh, but uh, if he keeps rehashing his application, unfortunately, then as the person on record for Professor Kidiki, I will be forced to be cantankerous, which is not my nature. Let's give Mr. Angelo time to finish. I am also obliged, my, my Lord. My Lord, finally, let us distinguish the Kisi case from what is before you. What is before you, my ladies, my lords, is a case where a party was not granted an opportunity to be heard. It is a question where there is a violation of Article 27, violation of Article 10, violation of Article 50, and violation of Article 25, that the right to be heard cannot be derogated. What was in Kisi, my ladies, my lords, is that the Kisi deputy governor underwent the full trial at the Senate. And therefore, my ladies, my lords, those facts are distinguishable. Finally, my ladies, my lords, Mr. Gumbo urged you to fight that um, there will be crisis if the position of the deputy president is not filled. I want to remind him that Article 139 and Article 146 has created an avenue and a remedy where if the president is even today impeached, the remedy is that the, the Speaker of the National Assembly under Article 146 takes over for 60 days and at, under Article 139, if the two of them are not able to take office, again the remedy is that the Speaker takes over. So we are not in a crisis whatsoever, my ladies, my lords. I invite my learned friend, Senior Mr. Kibe, to proceed. My Lord, uh, I start with the assurance to my learned colleagues that I know what, what is reply to issues of law. So I hope uh, I can proceed without a lot of interruptions. My Lord, I start, I start with the submissions by my learned colleagues, Professor Mugai. I agree with him a lot that uh, you cannot be able, you are entitled, we are entitled to our legal opinion, but we are not entitled to our set of facts. And therefore, where the set of facts is as they are. But my Lord, in saying this, it is important to remember that what also litigants are not uh, entitled to, and this is the reason for conservatory orders, <coughs> is the fact that unlike in war, where you can change facts on the ground. The court looks, uh, the court does not accept a situation 
in which one party would be allowed to change facts on the ground 